Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Caption Life, a podcast about how comics and pop culture impact life and society and vice versa. Coming to you from deep in the heart of Texas, my name is Kevin, and joining me via Mystical Portal is my good buddy Sean in Indiana. Hello, dear squire. <laughs> I'm not your squire. <laughs> if anything, you're my squire. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, who's the sidekick in this in this relationship? <laughs> right. Hey, before we get started at this episode, please hit the subscribe button on whatever podcast platform you listen to us on and follow us on social media at Caption Life on both Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Reddit, and we're now on Facebook. Mm-hmm. You can also find more info and past episodes at thecaptionlife.com. Uh, Hey, we're happy to bring you the greatest geeky conversation in all the realms. And today we are talking to uh, webcomic creator Molly Farnsley, uh, who has been creating stories since she was a little girl and wants to share her ideas and art with the world. She graduated from college in 2013 with a degree in professional writing, and her main focus is her fantasy webcomic Ever Present, which launched on, which launched on uh, August 1st, 2016. So you're celebrating your, your five-year anniversary. Uh, she lives in the Midwest with her husband and her two cats named Wheatley and Kiwi. Well, Welcome to the show, Molly. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, Molly, we're, we're glad you're here with us and we want to talk to you about your work. But before mm-hmm. uh, we get into your work, we, we always start off when we get a chance to interview people um, to, to hear your origin story, to hear your backstory. <laughs> so we want to know a little bit about you, your journey, and yeah. uh, specifically uh, as, it, as you know, with, with your relationship with comics and kind of how you got to where you're at now. Oh, absolutely. So yeah, my love for writing and my love for comics kind of came separately. And only in my recent adult years have I married the two. Um, When I was a little kid, I always had trouble sleeping. I mean, that's my poor mother. I stopped taking naps when I was one year old. So (laughs) I just would sit in bed and stare at the ceiling and be like, I'm bored, but I can't get out of bed. Hmm. I could come up with a story in my head though. Nobody could stop me from doing that. So I would just (laughs) come up with ideas and stories and characters and what have you. Comics, I fell in love with them uh, also as a kid because I would flip through Baby Blues and Peanuts and Calvin and Hobbes, of course. And even before I could read, I would take in the drawings and sometimes I would like come up with my own ideas of what story was taking place based on their expressions and what was happening. And once I started reading, I was like, oh, okay, I wasn't even close. Um, but <laughs> I just, I adore a story that can tell a character's journey visually and not just through printed medium like in a novel Mm -hmm. so in college mid to late college um, my roommate introduced me to a web comic called archipelago which to this day is still my favorite web comic ever and i was just so intrigued by these characters their designs the story and it just how it kept continuing book after book after book and i thought oh my gosh this would be the coolest way to tell a story i wish i could do that but i was not an artist i didn't start drawing really at all like not seriously until about 2014 give or take oh wow yeah um the only art classes I took in college were like the art appreciation, like go to this museum and give me a report about this statue. I'm like, all right, cool. Um, (laughs) I didn't know any terms. I didn't know how to use Photoshop or anything, but Mm -hmm. for my birthday, my mother-in-law gave me my drawing tablet, which I still haven't used. And I'm drawing a hole in it. Literally there's big scratch marks in it where the veneer (laughs) is scraping off. This poor thing is on its last legs. But anyway, um, yeah, I thought, you know what? There's a few people out there who have taught themselves. Surely I can teach myself too. So I just kind of started. And it just took practice and practice and practice and practice and practice and practice forever (laughs) until I got comfortable enough. Well, that's that's a lie. I still am not always comfortable enough until I had the confidence (laughs) to try and just kind of sat down with a story that I absolutely 100% love and believe in and want to tell. And I started August 1st, 2016. And yeah, my five year anniversary is coming up soon of that, which is insane to me. I can't believe it's been that long. But the, my one complaint with web comics, it is the longest way to tell a story in <laughs> the world. Oh my goodness. I update once a week. And 
in the comic, I've been, we've been in the same day, technically the same afternoon for, I think, months. <laughs> I think about a year now and I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> That's kind of rough can, sometimes. Hey, I, we've, we've mentioned it several times on the show. You can always go like seventh season of Game of Thrones and just, <laughs> just like fast forward through important plot points at the end. Oh yeah. Cause no, nobody cares about plot points. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't tie up any loose ends. Just leave us to wonder. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No problem. Um, yeah, so I've, I, like I said, I've always loved stories. I've always loved writing. I went to school for it. Um, and that's where I met, uh, a lot of like-minded people, which was awesome. But yeah, the art that was, that's a more recent development. And so it kind of breaks my heart. Um, when people look at my art or other people's art and they're like, Oh, that's great. I can never do that. I'm like, really? Cause I couldn't do it, you know, five <laughs> years ago. Right. If you just practiced, I bet you'd surprise yourself. So I've just been really stubborn, really, really stubborn and ambitious <laughs> and it's kind of paid off. Right. Well, I, I was going to say, I think that's great hearing you talk about that because I know, you know, for myself, I'm not an artist by any means whatsoever. I screw up stick figures. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> How sure. did you and I meet? In the uh, uh, comic creators group. I've seen you yeah. draw. I follow you on Instagram. You have fantastic art. What are you talking about? What is this false modesty you've thrown at me? All right. Yeah. No, it's, um, but I, I, I love hearing that, you know, you didn't get into drawing. Um, excuse me. Sorry. I just bumped into my microphone. Um, um, that you didn't get into drawing until you were um, an adult. And I think a lot of people, um, you know, myself included would think that to be an artist, you have to start really early and be dedicated, which you definitely are dedicated. But I think, you know, the age thing is what really stops people. It's like, you know, I'm too old to do this sort of thing. And, and I think it's really great to hear that you're sharing, you know, you didn't get into the drawing part until well into adulthood. And I think that's awesome to hear. And like, and I told myself, I don't have to be the next, um, Jim Lee or, um, uh, you know, uh, I'm blanking on his name. Who's the guy? Kirby. Uh, uh, Jack Kirby. Kirby. Jack Kirby. Thank you. I'm like, he's the guy with all the dots. Yeah. Um, <laughs> certainly not. I, I just want to be a person that I can look at my own art and appreciate and think, hey, this is great. I like it. And I think as soon as that barrier fell of, well, I didn't grow up with that. I can't do it. Then I realized, you know what? What if like every five years, every decade, there's a skill that I try to apply myself to? And obviously in this decade, it could be drawing. What if in the next it's animation and then the next it's baking and then the next after that it's gardening or mechanic, or, like being a mechanic or something like mm-hmm. there's so many worlds and, and skills to explore and discover. And you don't have to be the best to enjoy it. You can be mm-hmm. really right, bad right. at it and still enjoy it. And that just takes so much pressure off. Definitely. Well, I don't know if you can be bad at baking and then still really enjoy it. <laughs> the, the, the cleaning up after is kind of a, kind of a bummer. Won't lie. <laughs> I I I'm encouraged by your story though because it 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 does remind me that it's never too late uh, to start something and to chase your dream. And I, I'll be honest with you, like I wanted to be a radio DJ when I really? was a kid. Yeah, when I was in eleventh grade, yeah. I had to like write a write a paper on what I wanted to be when I grew up and I wanted to be a radio DJ and um, I worked my, my aunt is a radio DJ and I would intern with her like over the summers and so cool. really, really wanted to do it. Um, but like, I, I don't know, I don't know where I went like off the, off the rails to like pursuing that or maybe just thinking that it was un, an unrealistic, uh, an unrealistic dream. And I don't want to say I settled for teaching because I really feel like teaching is what I was called to do. And when I teach, like I have a captive audience of 20 to 30 kids <laughs> and they have to listen to me. But here, like what we do now really gives me an opportunity to explore what I've always wanted to do, which is which is something in the in the media realm. And and it is yeah. um, it is it, it is it is cool that you're that you're you're chasing that dream. And it's not, and it's not too late. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely not. And I mean. I think a big part of it too, is that my parents were immensely supportive. Mm-hmm. Um, the writing, especially, I mean, they, they'd read my reading and they're like, you want to go to college for this? Awesome. Like, let's like, we will hundred percent, you know, emotionally support you and like be there for you. And when I got into drawing my mom, every single time she's like, Molly, this is beautiful. I'm like you're my mom. You're supposed <laughs> to say that, but no, she's still, where were we? I got to visit them. They live like a state away, like five hours away, but I got mm-hmm. to visit them last, or they got to visit me, I should say, last week. And uh, my comic came up somewhere in a in a restaurant, and the server, I guess, heard me talk about it. He goes, "Oh, I read comics on my break. What is it?" 
And my mom starts gushing. Oh, it's so good. It's been going for so long. I'm like, mother, you're embarrassing me, but I know that's your job. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they've, she's been my biggest fan from the start. Good. Yeah, Kevin and I talk about on the show all the time how our moms are our biggest fans and they're oh. probably our only listeners. Too. <laughs> oh, that's what moms should be, though. You know? Right. Yeah. God bless moms. Yeah, exactly. Um, so Molly, can you educate for us, um, what exactly is a web comic? Because that's where your area is at and why you decide to do that versus, uh, traditional comics. Yes. And I get that question a lot when I bring it up with friends or strangers, I oh, have great. to explain, first of all, that a web comic is like a comic book that you'd find at the drugstore or, you know, a comic book store, or the library, mm -hmm. except for one minor thing. It's not printed. It is only online usually. Right. Um, and that is why I did it. I didn't have to print it. I didn't have to worry about having it on paper, so to speak, or maybe just on paper and then not having a good scanner or whatever. And I love having an undo button. Drawing digitally is the most forgiving medium of all time. <laughs> and yeah, so that's one reason I went into web, a webcomic is for the, the uh, price, if you will. I mean, I have had other friends go uh, print their own books or go with publishing houses for their own novels, which is great, but very expensive. And I love having the luxury of sharing a link and then everything I've done, someone can just review it for free. Um, right, I right. do have some uh, ways that I can make money off of it to help support like the website hosting costs, but that's a whole other ball of wax. But yeah, web comics to me are so great and such a fun way to tell a story. So I was like, well, I'm going to do this because there are just so many perks to it. Right. Definitely. And so it sounds like there's one of the driving factors is, you know, the, the budgetary where, you know, if you have to print it, that costs a lot more than having to do on a web comic and everything. I it's do have it printed. My oh, father-in-law yeah. actually surprised me one day and my <laughs> jaw hit the floor, um, <laughs> but he printed like volumes of it. Like right. I could, right. I was so excited, but yeah, I still need to sit down and print it's called a perfect binding version, like, kind of like a trade, if you will, of mm -hmm. a bunch of comics together. I right. still need to do that for the first book because I'm in the middle of the second book right now. Gotcha. Oh, mm -hmm. that's great. Mm -hmm. um, so your web comic that we've been talking about is called Ever Present. And we just want to know if you could tell us a little bit more about what it is and yeah. what the story is about and what inspired you to do that story. Absolutely. So Ever Present is the story of a young woman who is kidnapped on her wedding day and mm -hmm. has to, uh, and she's replaced with a lookalike assassin. So she has to uh, rescue her fiance, who's a prince, by the way, in order mm -hmm. to save the kingdom. Um, this story came to me, this is going to sound really meta, but bear with me. It came from a dream I had, but to be <laughs> fair, I have a lot of dreams and I don't always turn all of them into web comics. So um, <laughs> The beginning of the, the story takes place of you see the bride running away from something and you don't really know who she is or what's going on or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And that was basically what my dream was, except it was set in a high school. So that's a little <laughs> different, I guess. Yeah, she was running against the lockers and like running, like trying to run faster. Her uh, She wasn't running very quickly. And all, all I knew is that like she was trying to get away from something. And if she got caught, she would lose everything she'd worked so hard to get. And that right. was like a really strong feeling. And even when I woke up, I thought, huh, that's an interesting idea. Let's explore that. And then <laughs> I got names and more world building and characters and villains. And it was just so fun. But um, the story continues more after that book two kind of continues in the life of that main character and the other characters alongside her and, it's been so fun to see them develop as characters, if you will. And oh, mm -hmm. seeing how people react to the story, that has been the best part. Um, my awesome. readers have been so gracious and just so fun to, you know, reply to and seeing their comments. And ah, it just feels like I'm going along with them for the ride. That's great. Mm -hmm. What? Maybe you should have left it as a high school because that's often the nightmare dungeon that I'm trying to escape from. In my Fair dreams. enough. Yes. <laughs> it'd be, a completely, it'd be meeting, a completely different fantasy story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was no, I'm stuck Kevin. with fantasy, castles, dragons, knights, the, you know, all, gotcha. all that good stuff. <laughs> I was about to say, Kevin, I think you're always trying to escape high school even now, right? Uh, well, I mean, I would take a job in high school because it means that I would like get to go to work earlier and get out earlier. Um, mm -hmm. but 
I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I tell, I, when I get a chance to like really talk to my kids, I often tell them like, look, nothing's changed in the 20 years since I've been in high school. Um, (laughs) The girls didn't talk to me then and they don't really like the girls in my class don't really talk to me now. And so uh, (laughs) I'm still, I'm still the, I'm still like pretty geeky. So like, it's not, (laughs) nothing's changed. (laughs) See, I had a weird experience because I was geeky, but I also was homeschooled for high school. So oh, okay. I, yeah, and I loved it. It was great for me. I mean, I, I was able to supplement a few classes that we couldn't do homeschooling mm-hmm. like at our local community college. So right. it was fantastic. It worked out great for me. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Now, now, Molly, you were talking about with your web comic. I, I think this is one of the things as you're describing it, it hit me that, oh, this is actually something that would be really more beneficial to do as a web comic versus traditional is that you're talking about how your um, you know, fans or audience are mm-hmm. commenting on the webcomic itself. So you kind of see the discussion thread on each page. Yeah. Which I've seen some of those. I think that's really cool. Like to get that sort of direct feedback um, oh, as yeah. an artist and a storyteller. And I think that's a really cool perk of having a webcomic is that you can actually get that real time and uh, you know, a feedback quicker than if you printed oh, them yeah. out. And then yeah. seeing people's anticipation, like, I wonder what's going to happen next. Or I hope so-and-so has a, a, a cool story arc or whatever. You don't get mm-hmm. that if you've written a novel. You might get a nice letter from a fan or something or like right. a friend be like, oh, I like this one scene. But I'm kind of a sucker for feedback. And I'm like, what did you think of this? <laughs> what did you think of that? So opening the floor up every single page, I was like, oh, I, I need to do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's weird that you like that that's a that that's the what you like to do in this like modern age of like like immediate gratification and interaction because Mm -hmm. 90% of what you see online is you ruined my favorite character. (laughs) Okay. Maybe maybe I should know what you're doing. When I say feedback, that is a very diplomatic way of saying like a pat on the back. You did a good job. I love this character. (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) But no, really like I've, you know, there's been some good feedback of like, Oh, wait a minute. You're this one panel is missing something. Oh, which by the way, that's another thing. Very few artists get the luxury of being able to fix something once it's published. Right. Because I looked back, I'm like, I totally forgot to draw buttons on his sleeve or, oh no, I forgot, you know, th- there was one time I totally forgot like a cloak someone had. I'm like, how the frick did I forget that? But <laughs> luckily I fixed it, re-uploaded it. Nobody was the wiser. <laughs> <laughs> do you, That's awesome. Do you, are there things that you don't like to draw that you try to avoid? Like, do you, do you frame scenes so you don't have to draw feet and things like that? Yes. <laughs> Butts. <laughs> I hate drawing butts. Oh, butts. You will notice I draw a lot of cloaks and jackets and like long dresses that hide said butts because <laughs> I just can't wrap my mind around butts. Like I, <laughs> they look weird and I can't get them right. That's my one kryptonite with drawing is butts. And every time I have to complain to my friends, actually my D&D group too, I'm always like, guys, there's another butt. I can't do it. And they'll be like, you can do it, Molly. Draw the butt. I'm like, okay. <laughs> So yes, butts are my weakness. If I say that, if, if like I say that now, the whole internet's gonna. I'm sure that's not. Yeah, gonna it's gonna, gonna hit. That's gonna hit Reddit tomorrow. Butts are my weakness too. Right. My weakness too. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, you mean like you have a thing for them? No. Like, I can't <laughs> so awesome. you you've told us about the inspiration for um, your comic and and you're you're a storyteller at heart. So. Uh, do you, do you, with this in mind, do you have or do you have an end for ever present in mind? And are there any other stories or projects that you're that you're working on or you want? Yeah, to great question. To eventually? That's one thing I promised myself when I started this, that I would have a solid ending. And there is a solid ending. And I've got, well, heck, I've got three different notebooks that are chock full of notes and literally like oh, all wow. my thumbnails and stuff. And here's a little sneak peek book three. Um, yes, I told myself if I'm going to commit this much of my life to a story, I want to see it through. So yes, I've got a, like a really concrete ending in mind that I'm really excited to share with people. Um, realistically, I did the timeline in my head. It's probably going to be another seven years, maybe. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I mean, cause if you can calculate one page per week, uh, not excluding or excluding holidays and such, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this is going to take 
a good portion of my life, but you know what? I'm willing to do that. But in regard to other stories, of course, I have other stories. I'm like, this would be a great web comic. There's a few I've told my husband. He's like, babe, you should hire somebody else to do that because if you can't, somebody needs to, um, which is a huge, huge compliment. But I'm like, uh, I don't know if I could trust my character. You're my husband. You have to say that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's one web comic idea I have in mind um, where it's set in South Florida with. Uh, um, mermaids and a young man who's trying to figure out his life as a marine biologist and i love the idea but i think i love the setting more than the story because currently mm. i don't have a story i have scenes in mind i have mm -hmm. characters but i don't have a concrete line of of plot and narrative and if i'm going to commit to that where it would be a very intensive uh, mm -hmm. uh art goal because south florida there are specific places in mind that i can draw like plazas and um the intercoastal i've been there several times with my family and i'm always inspired when i go there but mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to to draw real places is a lot more difficult than drawing a fantasy world where it's like well it's a field mm, i just drew a field okay and that's a quick field and then that's what it is and oh there's a cave and whatever you you're gonna accept whatever it is because i've come up with it this is not based on reality but if i'm suddenly drawing like oh i don't know deerfield beach uh, an actual place I've gone before with my family that I love. I need to get it right because people know what it looks like. They can look it up. So those backgrounds would be really intense. I would have to make sure I really understand what I'm doing and that I'm fully committed. And I think in order to do that, I need to have a story that I'm like 100%. Oh, I want to do this. I want to do this. In fact, that was my motivation when I started Ever Present. I started, if you will, the thumbnails, the sketching, the stories, knowing full well I wanted it to be a webcomic before I even knew how to draw, before I had a tablet. I thought, I'll figure that out when I get there. And so by the time, oh gosh, let me think here. I think I was like a hundred pages in of thumbnails, you know, like those quick sketches. Mm -hmm. And by then I finally was like, okay, I am emotionally invested enough that I'm going to make this happen. In fact, on my very first book, I have a little note that says, don't be nervous. You've got this. Awesome. Um, on my second one, I also have a pep talk. It says, you the man. <laughs> and on my third one, oh, I don't have one on my third one. Well, I will come up one with some kind of motivational, you know, pep talk thing. When I get just there, keep swimming. Just keep swimming, essentially, <laughs> yes. I had to, like, keep motivating myself. But I'm like, do the thing you're good at. Right. And then this, the other skills will come later if you if you practice. And they did. So it worked out. That's Thank awesome. You I, I'm excited about all of that. Like, I want to see your story, like... Oh, um, you. your 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 south florida story can i can i interject that maybe what it's missing before you commit to it fully is a talking manatee oh my gosh <laughs> it's hilarious i've thought about uh the mermaid the main mermaid character actually they're the background of my phone right now because i drew them for mermaid oh, very cool oh awesome thank you um I thought about giving her an animal companion. Like I thought of a dolphin. Then I thought maybe an otter, but I kind of like the idea of a manatee, maybe talking manatee, oh, like real body positive manatee. Who's like, no, this is great. the, this is the body that I was given and I'm going to live my best life. I mean, right. a beautiful sea potato. <laughs> yeah. I, I am all about that. Yeah. So I'll look into that. And it's also a social influencer too. <laughs> yeah. Like she's got her own Instagram account. Right. Yeah. <laughs> ideal goals <laughs> right I, and i was also thinking too that like what are the chances that in the very last pages of that the the book of notes that molly has that um we find out that selena is actually in high school and wakes up in detention and the whole thing has been a dream don't do that because i think it cheapens it <laughs> very mean there it, yeah no i promise you i will not do that i do i no, no, I mean, it was all a dream. Sequence. Yeah, it was all a dream. So she was in high Crazy. school and now she and she wakes up and then she can't escape that either. I right. have come up with a modern equivalent, although it's set in college, of if Ever Present was set in modern day, what would that look like? Mm -hmm. um, it, it's obviously not everything translates, mm -hmm. but it's like she's living with her mom who's abusive, uh, but goes to a coffee shop to like to study and of course silas is a barista there or he calls himself a barista like he's still got his sense of humor um <laughs> and eventually like his dad who owns some rental properties offers her like a house to stay in while she tries to escape from her abusive mother yeah and that was like a fun i love what if scenarios like what if this happened what if that happened and that's honestly how a lot of my stories get written it just what if and then i just explore the uh possibilities that's, yeah, awesome. that's awesome mm -hmm. the, um that. 
the uh, I know that one of the for like Disney Imagineers, one of the one of the steps in their process, even when they're when they're flushing out a character for a movie or whatever, or like an idea for a movie, that's the elevator pitch is always what if a what if toys were alive and could talk yeah. to each other so like it's it's a, it's always that's how that's how everything snowballs and i think right. it's a really cool creative um creative uh process a really cool process to do when you when you're trying to flush out what you want in your story oh and it's so fun i just love exploring because to me the story is very alive and there's still moments that surprise me even though i wrote them years ago or like mm -hmm. a moment where a character does something and i'm like or, you know, it, it, it's written, I'm writing and I'm like, oh, this character is going to do this now. I didn't see that coming. So when people tell me like, oh my gosh, I couldn't believe when this happened. I'm like, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It just takes on a life of its own. It, it really does. It really does. Right. Um, you know, Molly, I, I want to share that um, as we were reading through your, uh, through Ever Present, Mm -hmm. I really love some of your artistic styles that you have that I haven't actually seen in other comics before. Really? So like, yeah. Like, so for example, there was a scene where um, I forget who was talking, but Desolaire was in there and okay. he said something, um, you know, like coldly or like chilly, like back to somebody. Oh, yes. And, and I love how the speech bubble, you added like the little frost, like icicles at the bottom to convey <laughs> that meeting. And I was like, that is such a great way. Thank you. To help convey that with like visuals and everything. I was just, I was like floored. I was like, that is awesome. And then. <laughs> Um, a couple other scenes where people are whispering to each other. You have the speech bubble, yeah. but you like turn down the opacity on it. Mm -hmm. it. It really visually tells the reader like what's happening without having to like, I guess, try to figure out a really elaborate way yeah. to say that they're whispering. Like you know? a novel, you can do that. But with a right. webcomic, you got to be a little more intentional to show tone of voice and uh, this and that. Yeah, I remember doing that because I remember I needed it to be like really chilly. Mm -hmm. And I thought, hey, let's make them look like icicles or whatever, which the program I used does not allow me. Uh, it's not a, there's not as much freedom on speech bubbles. So I had to kind of get creative. Those are all technically like tails, if you will, like the speech oh, cool. tails. Yeah. yeah. So I just added a bunch more. Yeah. <laughs> um, I remember a moment to my sister responded to a page where Silas spoilers for anybody who might read it. Anyway, there's a there, there's a moment where Silas starts to cry. Uh, and I added, I think, extra little speech bubbles. So it looked like his speech bubble was dissolving. Oh, she looked at neat. it and said, his speech bubble's crying. <laughs> like, that's a good way to think about it. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's so cool. Cause we, we've talked about it with other people that there's some, there are specific ways that they really make the words and pictures marry together to give you mm -hmm. like that full experience. And those, mm -hmm. those things are innovative and very, very cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. And yeah, I just got to say it's, it was awesome when I was reading through that. I was like, Oh my gosh, this Thank is you. just so cool. Yeah. Oh and Thank you. <laughs> so I, I guess I wanted to ask you, you know, with, with some of your drawing styles and your storytelling um, and, you know, I know I'm going to ask you to brag on yourself and no, not everybody likes bragging about themselves, but like, what, what are some other things that you feel like is really like a cornerstone or a corner piece of your storytelling or your yeah. um, artist cap capability or uh, drawings? So I'd say I've been focused really on body language, specifically with mm -hmm. hands. I've been trying to, let me, let me phrase that. I've noticed that in comics that I really felt connected to the artist didn't just keep the hands out of the shot. They have them in the scene for some reason to show like, is it, are, are the hands loose? Are they showing that the person is like feeling relaxed? Are they tight? Are they in fists? Are they running through their hair? Mm -hmm. Because hands are the way we kind of connect to the world. So that's one thing I've tried to be really clear on. So if you remember in the most recent scene, one of the most recent scenes where Selena is really nervous that she's going to be caught by Thorne, she has her hand over her brooch that's connecting her, her cloak. And I've had it there the mm -hmm. whole time. It's like, is it right. she's trying to cling to something? So that to me, like, the body language of hands, I think, are much more important than some comic artists or artists in general realize. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I just, like I said, I, I think it's it just, you had some really great um, styles in your artwork that I haven't seen in other comics. So I just, I, Thank you. I can't applaud you enough for that. Oh, gosh. That's a great Thank creativity. You. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Pardon me as I turn red. <laughs> <laughs> That's very kind of you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, we are going to, we're going to take a step back from uh, ever present 
uh, for just a second, but we're going to stay in the realm of fantasy and we like to play uh, different games with our guests. And because you are a fantasy writer and uh, a big time fan of uh, Dungeons and Dragons, we yeah. thought we would yeah. we would do a game where um, we we get to pick our um, our uh, our fantasy name for for our fictitious a fictitious story. And so I'm calling this the Captioned Kingdom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up on the screen and then I'm going to share it so that you guys Excellent. Uh, can see it. Okay. So here, here we go. Uh, the <laughs> awesome. caption kingdom fantasy name generator. Oh, cool. uh, and we'll, we'll improve these graphics for when we actually put this on YouTube. Cause I had to do this on the quick, uh, <laughs> but here we go. Here we go. First, you're going to give yourself a title. If you so choose, you can pick King or queen prince or princesses, Duke or duchess. Uh, I guess Marques are, I'm not going to try to say that. Uh, Earl, Mach Countess. Chonet, ye, ye. Just <laughs> yeah, I couldn't tell if it was French your air and it, you're speaking French, basically. Yes. So uh, <laughs> if you want to write this down, you uh, you can. So okay. you're going to give yourself a, a title. And okay. I actually need to, I need to grab something so that I can write mine down. I hope quick. my pencil is quiet. Sorry. Okay. Let's try this out. And... My husband got me a little pencil wizard the other day, by the way, who's uh, so <laughs> I'm basically set. Nice. The next thing that you are going to do is you're going to pick your character type and your birth month is your uh, is your class. So you're going Excellent. to pick your pick your birth month, birth month, uh, pick your character based on your birth month. Kevin, can I just ask real quick, like, mm -hmm. Did you have a plan on like how you assigned this? Because the one that's for me is pretty much spot on. <laughs> uh, no, I, I just, that's ran, awesome. I, I found a bunch of, um, uh, I found a bunch of D and D classes, like as a list and there were 12 yeah. of them. And then I just replaced a few of them with other, with other things. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I want to go with the troll class next time. Sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really would. That'd be fun. Okay, so your first letter of your name, first letter of your first name becomes your your new name. So there are several, uh, there's one for every letter of the alphabet, uh, both uh, male and female. You can choose the one that you, uh, the, the one that you want, mm -hmm. um, but it's got to be the one that, uh, the one that matches up with your, sure. uh, your name. So choose any letter from your name. Yeah, like you're you're gonna be you're gonna be the S name, right? Okay, because it's okay. Mir Miriel, these are great. These are honestly really good for like, just if you need to pick a character name, fantasy character name. Mm -hmm. I found a I found a website that had a bunch of character names, but they had characters for like dwarf names and people oh, yeah. names and elfish names and best. Awesome. Uh, here goes the last step. I think is the last step. Your last name is your favorite animal, Ooh. but you have to add heart, stone, rock, blade, or blood to it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, saying um, mine, oh, I'm saying mine. In my, I'm saying mine in my head, and it just sounds ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then the place that you're from is the setting of your favorite TV show, but you have to add Shire, Ham, <laughs> Ford, Port. Uh, that should that should say Stead or Wick. Stead, okay. And I, I have a link of like all the, the what all these places mean. Uh, like uh, Ham, I think means a fortified place, and Shire mm -hmm. means county and things like that. Oh, okay. But I just I just grabbed a bunch of them. It's like let's just add awesome. these things to our favorite. Um, <laughs> Oh, what is my favorite show right now? <laughs> right. I know it's God, so hard. Um, you know what? I'm watching the crown. So I'm going to say London. So because I came up with this, this silly game, I'm going to go first. I'm going to share mine <laughs> based on the, based on the information uh, above. I am Duke. Clayton Koala Stone, Ranger from Scrantonshire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. 
Oh, I kind of want to change my answer now. <laughs> Uh, koalas are like literally the laziest animals on earth and <laughs> like it's what I aspire to be like like I mean I have a family and a job That's and everything so but there are so many days where I just feel like a, a koala and it's, coincidentally I watch a lot of The Office so <laughs> you know what's funny Kevin is so Molly Kevin and I like the more we do this show and interact with each other more we like we're pretty much the same person is that <laughs> yeah. I had thought about using Scranton for my favorite oh, yeah. TV show. So that's so weird. That's <laughs> we, really yeah, funny. we were separated at birth. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the the movie Twins with uh, Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger is I've pretty much it. us. It's hilarious. Yeah. Said I'm Arnold I'm the Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> No, Sean's literally oh. a foot tall. Sean's literally a foot taller than me, so that's not true. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm six six. Yeah, I, I remember. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all right, been, Sean. It's been long, but yeah, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sean, right. you get you got to go next because we're gonna save Molly for last because because she's our she's our esteemed guest. Oh, Sounds good. <laughs> so my name is I'm I'm part of the giant class. Hmm. Which is why I asked about the the month because oh, yeah. I was like, this is pretty much me. <laughs> oh yeah, your birthday's next month. Yeah, it is. And uh, so my name is Baron Siphus Wanda Turtleblade. Turtleblade. <laughs> <laughs> Here's from, that app shell. Right. <laughs> <laughs> from Smallville Shire. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> So yeah, I'm I'm really been into the Superman Lois show. I think it's a really right. good show. Yeah, it's it's if you haven't watched it yet, it's it's awesome. I love it. It's they, yeah, my doing husband's a great job into it. it. He yeah. really liked it. Yeah, it's great. All, oh, right. All right, this is awesome. Yeah, and then and then Molly, what are you? What are you? Uh, well, what's your this character? Is obviously, going to be my new D and D character. So I okay. need to write another sixty page backstory for this person. Um, <laughs> I'm a sorceress. My name is Baroness Muriel Capybara Blade, um, <laughs> which is like such a funny combo to think together, considering they're like the friendliest animal on the planet. Right. Um, and I hail from Pawnee Shire. Ah, yes. <laughs> I completely forgot about Parks and Rec. I don't know how I did, but I did. Oh my gosh. <laughs> ben Wyatt would love that. <laughs> yes. Oh gosh. He is he is the nerd I think that many nerds aspire to be. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cones of Dunshire. All about the cones. Yes. <laughs> Literally one of my best friends in the world sent me a whole bunch of stickers. And one of my favorites that I haven't had the heart to put on anything is the cones of Dunshire. Oh, that's awesome. It's so cool. I love it. <laughs> you can't put that on anything. You got to preserve it. Exactly. That's, yes. I don't. Yeah. Like, I, like it's, I have you get skipping a, issues, you know, you so get I get, like never a have comic, tattoos. You get like a comic <laughs> cover, like a comic plastic Mylar bag and you slide that sticker down inside of it and then you just save the sticker. There we go. There we go. I should do that. <laughs> and, then, yep. and then 50 years, you'll have a mint cones of Dunshire sticker that will probably be worth thousands of dollars. I'll yes. pay for one of my kids textbooks when they go to college. Right. <laughs> no, 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 don't <laughs> textbooks. Textbooks are gone. You, it's, it's all. Oh online. yeah. By yeah. then it will be either just ebook or holographic or VR download mm -hmm. or, yeah. in, in, you know, neural implant in the brain. There we go. <laughs> it's, I'm, we're I'm, kidding, but it's going down that direction. I know. I, I, I'm in like online higher ed, and these are the conversations we have. Is is oh. uh, yeah, it's it's pretty insane. Oh <laughs> I refuse to take. I refuse to take any course that I that I can't do on my Game Boy Advance. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, oh, what was that? Was the days. What was the thing that was like the Nintendo thing that was red and oh, it the was Virtual like, Boy. Yeah, the virtual it would give people boy. headaches. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's right. Yes, that's how we're going to do school in the future. Is virtual boy. <laughs> the virtual boy? <laughs> Let so me you find never have to leave home. Yeah. Yeah. Zoom. <laughs> and hopefully, and hopefully, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to download Molly's uh, Molly's comic on it. Oh yeah, uh, you'll be able yeah. to watch your your whole thing on Virtual Boy in red, of course. In red. <laughs> that would they, be kind of killer. Be in, shit, no? It'll be in three D where you can actually go and interact with the comic uh -huh. as it's happening. See, now that would be cool. Yes. That would be really cool to get an interactive virtual, you know, like a VR comic. Oh, yeah, I'm sure oh, yeah. there's, you know, some people are already looking into that. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I'd be on board. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, I think it'd in, be amazing. 
In mm-hmm. tomorrow's news, Disney acquires the comic <laughs> ever present from oh my Mike gosh. <laughs> oh, I need to, to tell create you something. Their, to the, create their first interactive experience. <laughs> You sound like my husband because he says stuff like that. And, like, <laughs> oh, no, Disney's going to buy this for sure, good. babe. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. No, the literally words he said to me. Um, but honestly, do you know who follows me on Twitter? The Who's guy that? who wrote Sharknado and owns Silent Studios. And I'm like, no, I don't oh want you God. following me. <laughs> Why are you following me? <laughs> I have some concerns. I don't want Dragon NATO. Like, I really don't want <laughs> Oh. That should be one of the options for when we're picking names is right. NATO. <laughs> well, I, I, I fully expected somebody to use dra- like Dragon in their name because, I mean, it's a mythical beast, but it's an animal none the least. Right. Uh, Hey, Molly, before we let you go, can you let all of our uh, listeners know where they can find you and your work online? So my uh, webcomic, Everpresent, you can find it at everpresentcomic.com. My social media uh, links are listed there, but I'll mention them as well. So my Twitter, where I post updates there and other art is at living for the lamb. And that's living without a G. The mm-hmm. number four and then the lamb spelled out. Um, that's the same username for my Instagram as well. I don't post as much uh, webcomic related content there, but pretty much all my D&D art and my just commissions and fun stuff like that. But yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's where I'm active. All right. Oh, and not to mention there's a Discord server of my uh, webcomic as well. And we have a lot of fun there. Oh, Mostly cool. hearing memes, to be honest, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. what we'll tell our kids for like when I was your age, the internet was for memes. <laughs> <laughs> and now your cat videos ruled. You're watching <laughs> real soup of, of, of internet memes. <laughs> You're watching your teacher teach you on your, your game virtual boy. <laughs> <laughs> It's like that that from, uh, I was going to say, it, it, it's like that scene from Back to the Future where they're like, you got to use your hands to play that game. Elijah Wood. Yes. yes. Elijah Wood. <laughs> oh, so good. Oh, chef's kiss. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, that wraps up another episode of The Caption Live. Uh, we thank Molly for being with us today, and uh, we hope that you go and check out her comic. We also hope that you enjoyed listening. So don't forget to smash that subscribe button on whatever podcast platform you listen to. And you can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at caption life and if you like what we're doing give us a shout out tag us in a post and for more info about us and all of our previous episodes visit thecaptionlife.com until next time hail and farewell